Welcome to my designer class. My name is Mercy and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. In today's class, I'm going to be um, using the Colorful Seasons set, stamp set, and I will be showing you how I made this class using the turnabout style of stamping, which I think is something that is a lot of fun and everyone should give it a try. So, um, I was watching a different video about using the acetate um, paper that Stamp It Up sells, and I didn't, I don't even have it, but I thought about how I've been converting some of my stamp cases, and I'll show you what I did here, to accommodate the dies on the other side of the stamps. So I just put this magnetic piece in here, but, and I will say I use vent covers, like just cut them down. So I don't know if you can see that, my dimensions and all. You can get three out of each sheet. So that aside, but that's not the focus. What I'm gonna show is how I use the envelopes to um, make a, like a pattern or form to help do the circle, you know, the turning it about. So I'm gonna focus on that. These are very thick envelopes. They're very nice, but they're kind of difficult to cut. So it's not as gonna be as slick as the acetate thinner sheets. So I would definitely suggest using one of these um, guillotine style paper cutters and also a very heavy duty pair of scissors. So the first thing you'll wanna do is to cut open the envelope. And I will show you, you just cut it down like this. And this front part, I don't use so I'm not too concerned to have some waste there and um, eventually I want it to be five by five the acetate and then I will cut it down to the inside to use so I'll demonstrate that here so you just want to use your guillotine to um, cut off the and you can see this stuff is really hard. So even at this, I am going to have to cut it down a little further with the guillotine. But you get the picture. You, it's definitely very dense material. So it's going to take a few rounds, essentially. So not the easiest, but it is repurposing, which I wanted to do because I was just laying the, uh, these were just laying around my house and I wasn't using them anymore because I had converted um, to using the magnetic sheets with my dies instead of using these die pockets for the intended purpose. So as you can see, it just takes a little bit of time and then you, after you get it to about this point, you can start fine tuning it. Um, I already did that with a sheet, so I'm gonna set this aside and bring that piece in so basically you bring in a um, your sheet and you center it on your um, base here and usually people want the center to be four by four but in my case I'm doing a smaller one so um, you'll want two colors of marker and um, here I've already gone ahead and found the center here so that I could save a little time but you wanna, it's about 12 inches from the center here. You wanna find the center of your grid paper. So I will go ahead and show that. Start with the doing by the triangle. And this is a fairly important step. So do take your time and make sure that you really find the center because you want it to come out right. <laughs> and that won't happen if you rush it. Okay, so I just am, drawing around here and I will now the reason why you want two different colors is it's helpful down the line when you're trying to use this so I will put my purple marker aside and I will get out my black one now the center you just want to find the center of this and again you should probably count this out so I'm just kind of looking, I'm eyeballing it more or less, but the, with the grid lines, you really can get it pretty close. And somehow this doesn't look like right. One, two, three. 
Okay, I might have it right. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, instincts sometimes are correct. And my instinct was I had it a little off, and I did. Okay, so this looks pretty good now. Um, now I'm kind of doubting myself, so I will actually... <laughs> I really am doubting myself. But you get the idea. You need to count them and take your time with this portion. So I'll go ahead and do this. And go ahead and mark. Because this is so thick, and it's not like the slick acetate, but you can still see through it, which is important. Okay, so the next step is pretty straightforward. You do need something sturdy to start your first cut. So I've used an old punch here. The reason why I use an old one is I'm not sure if it will actually damage it. There, it's really hard. Okay, and then I just go ahead and go around and cut it out. So you get, and you want to be fairly exact, but it doesn't have to be 100% because your paper, when you cut it with the paper trimmer, you should have it exact at that point, as long as it fits inside this form. So I just go ahead, cut around, and then I will come in and do the next round. But I'm not sure how much of this I'll finish because it takes a little bit of time. But again, I'm repurposing something and I'm not having to go out and buy sheets. I'm using something that I already have on hand that I wasn't using anymore. And I hate to throw out stuff. So then you just come in here and you cut out your little corners. So you have the form. So go around and cut each one out. All right, I'm setting that one aside. I'll finish that later and I will now show you a little bit about the turnabout stamping. So I, you're not supposed to lay this flat with the two, the, well, what are these called? These doors. I'm not sure the correct term for the stamparatus. And for this particular one, I'm actually using a bigger one. So I used a bigger die pocket here and I cut this one down so that I could accommodate a four and a quarter by four and a quarter form. So I will show you how I did that and I'm going to be stamping for a card like this. So as you can see, then I went ahead and cut around here so you could, it could be used in that manner as well. Okay, so I have the sheet in here and I use one of these little button uh, magnets here. So I have that ready and I'm going to go ahead and start with the top one and I will actually start with the center one. And I want to, when you're first doing this, the first one you want is in the center here because you want to be able to fit everything in when you're laying out your stamp. And I, so I will go ahead and I will start with the purple Highland Heather, which is a beautiful color. I absolutely love purple. so. It's not too shocking that this is like one of my favorites. Anyhow, so without further ado, <laughs> I will show you how I did this. Now, I'm sorry if you can't see all the stamping here, but it, I got it. I'm going ahead and just stamping in a circular pattern and I'm going to stamp it eight times and that's very easy to keep track and so on because of this pattern we are creating by using this form. I'm not sure what the official thing is. I call it like a turnabout stamping, but you can, you definitely, it's very useful to have a stamparatus or a, a, some kind of stamping position tool to do this type of stamping, which I think is really neat. But you get the idea, you have to, go around. I'll try to do this quickly. Hopefully it all comes out right. <laughs> it does. It's actually, by having the form like this, it really eliminates a lot of the mistakes by using the stamparatus. So 
I'm just going to keep stamping here and then I will move on to the next stamp. Now this one's a little more complex than the leaf one I did as far as I'm using three different stamps on here. In the leaf one I only used two but I used two different colors. So that obviously is a little less <laughs> and it's also smaller. So I definitely think that it's useful to make different sizes. Most of the ones I've seen, they allow for the center to be a four by four sheet of paper. Okay, so that one's done. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, my chamois here to clean this off real quick because it's gonna be messy if I don't take a moment to do that. All right, and I'm gonna now simply just turn this around and I'm going to bring in my next stamp pad which is the Coastal Cabana. Now this one, when I positioned it, I wanted it in the center of these flowers and I wanted it towards the top. So that wasn't too difficult, you just lay it down, but for the sake of time, I've gone ahead and have it in here already, ready to stamp so I don't have to take a time to fuss with it and make sure I get the right spot. It's also a little harder when you're trying not to get your head in the way <laughs> when you're shooting a video. So that is why I did it ahead of time. Okay, so you're getting the picture of how this type of stamping works. I think it's really pretty and you can add quite a few different, at least I, I was able to fit three in, three different stamps. So I'm sure you could do other things that I haven't even thought of with this technique. I think it's a great technique and definitely very easy to do once you've made your form. And best of all for me, I didn't have to run out and buy acetate or order it and wait for it to come. I had some, I'm reusing or use, repurposing these envelopes that I had that I wasn't using because I'm using the magnet sheets for my dies. And by the way, these die envelopes or pockets, whatever you want to call them, they're very sturdy. They're very nice. So I really didn't want to throw them out. And, but at the same time, it is easier to have the dies right with the stamp set. There's no like searching like, oh, I want to use the stamp set. Oh, but where are the dies? I got to look through that. It's just all right there together. Okay. so. That one's all stamped and I will go ahead once again clean this off and if you don't have one of these thick chamois from Stamp It Up I would highly recommend it. They are just super nice. I really debated if I needed it or not and I'm so glad I went ahead and ordered one for myself. So the next color I'm going to use is the soft sea foam and I'm only going to stamp part of the stamp. I'm sorry as I close up these so I will go ahead and stamp just the flower part. There's also these cute little dots, but it would make it too big of an area for what I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp here. And I'm not terribly worried if I get a little mix up because some of this will be covered. But I would try to avoid for the most part the dots on this particular stamp for the colorful. Oh, wow. Here I'm going over it again. I was, I'm not thinking, it's okay, you can double stamp, but I actually didn't intend to do that this time, but <laughs> it kind of happened. So I'll just touch up a little on my stamp and come back in. So it's the same idea here. And one kind of cute thing actually is it creates this little center thing when you're stamping, but that's kind of covered anyway, but it's still neat, I think. So anyhow. I am going to just keep going around. Again, each stamped image will happen eight times. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's fun. And if you're not trying to make a video, it actually goes a little faster. So I do apologize, but if you need to skip for 10 seconds, please feel free. <laughs> YouTube is nice with that feature, but I will try to make this quick and just so you get the idea of how stamping this image goes. And I think 
it definitely shows that pretty quickly and easily, this video. All right, I'm almost two more times and I will have this underway. Now, I have seen these coin um, magnets in, on Amazon, if you're curious where to look for them. I felt like the really fit thick big one is actually overkill and it will, if you use a second one, which you have to have one for your form, it will draw together and you can actually break your magnet, which would not be good because Stampin' Up! does not replace it if you break it for your stupidity, <laughs> if you will. So anyhow, just look how beautiful that is. I just think that's amazing. And it's such a fun, simple technique. But I will now go ahead and set this aside. Now, you do not want to put your plates uh, against each other when they're on the hinges. You should always move one. Okay, so that set aside. And I, next I will show you how I assembled this beautiful card and talk about one of the products that I used. Okay, so I used the tailored tag to, I stamped the image. I will show that. So I stamped, you make me smile. Here it is. And I embossed that and then, so I have that prepared. And I went ahead and punched out in the Coastal Cabana and then I cut it in half with my paper trimmer. So with this trick helps you be able to mat your um, sentiment. Very simple, but I think effect effective. So all you have to do here is just come in and leave a little border. You won't have it on the sides, but you definitely don't have to have it on the sides to still be really pretty. You just want to try to make them equal and I think that oh <laughs> it's easier said than done but it's really not too bad Ugh, this is not going my way today okay anyway you get the picture I'm not sure why this is not sticking I must not have gotten it up high enough my snail oh so anyhow I just want to get this together <laughs> and show you what all that how what I did here okay so um, to do the turnabout I used a four and a quarter by four and a quarter white card stock and after stamping it I just fussy cut it out and this is what I have so in order to save some time I went ahead and made one before now for the base card I used the Highland Heather um, card stock and I cut it the lengthwise and then um, scored it at five and a half. Okay, so now this is the beautiful new color, the soft sea foam cardstock, and I used this climbing vine uh, embossing folder, and I think this is just gorgeous. So I will go ahead and assemble the card real quick, and we can end this video since it is kind of a long one, but I wanted to focus on this type of stamping and showing how I was able to use the die pockets that I was not using for their intended purpose for this and create some, I think, long lasting patterns for myself that really takes all the guesswork out of circular or turntable style um, stamping. So here I have the this and I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. Oh, I already put some tear tape on here. So I don't need to do that. And at this point, I did not do any dimensionals on this part, but I did do dimensionals for the sentiment. So I'll show that. Now with the bow, I'm terrible at tying bows and it, even worse when it's on the camera. So I went ahead and got this bow ready. It's the polka dot tool ribbon. This is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, easy to use ribbon. I do like colored ribbon, but truth, truthfully, I use, I just love using actually a neutral color because it goes with everything. You don't have to order as much. So it, that's one advantage. And white is definitely just 
always goes with everything. Um, of course, black does too, but in this case, I'm making a very summery looking card, I think, and I wanted to use the white. And this tool is just very elegant. It's perfect for kind of a girly card or a wedding or anything like that. Now I have my ribbon kind of in place and I did this slightly lower than center, but not a ton lower. So just set it here. Now the next thing I'm going to use is a mini glue dot. And oh, here they are. You just want to get a hold of it with your paper piercer, curl it up a little bit so you have it in hand, then put it on the back of your bow and hope eh, <laughs> and try not to get your fingers involved <laughs> too much, which is why the paper piercer is really useful. Okay, so there we have the card. And I also wanted to bring back the fall one and show you a little bit about that one. Um, I have some written dimensionals on that. I use the same stamp set and it looks completely different, which I guess it, that's the beauty of this particular stamp set. It's colorful seasons, so we, it features all the different seasons of the year. So I think that um, you should think about doing this card for the fall and the turn style pattern I used was this one and it, I cut it a five by five and you can use the acetate or these pockets and then the inside paper was four and a quarter by four and a quarter the square so you can see that fits right in there now the colors here I stamped with every other color so that it's the same image but look how it changes it up I just thought it turned out really well too anyhow um, if you like this video and you would like to subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to order any of the products, I can give you a hostess code and directions on how to order from me. My email is mewants3 at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.